I'm Maristel Bagus Hosaka, and I'm part of the product marketing team for cloud security solutions at Fortinet. And I'm joined by my colleague, Louis Ibera, our principal cloud architect. And together, we're going to talk about Fortis CNP and give you a brief overview as well as a demo. So let's get started. So, what is Fortis CNP? Fortis CNP is a SaaS based cloud security solution that helps to simplify cloud security operations. We've taken a different approach in that we're not trying to redevelop a new solution that competes with the likes of AWS or, or Azure in terms of you know, cloud security services or anything along those lines. But in fact, what we've done is we've taken a simplistic approach by building integrations with these types of services as well as Fortinet security fabric um, to be able to ingest the security findings that are the outputs of these services and analyze it in a way where we're able to normalize it and provide a priority list of all the risk-based resources within the cloud ecosystem. And so what it does is when it does uh, ingest the, the finding, it creates this uh, risk graph database that maps those risk interdependencies. And the technology that we've uh, launched alongside for the CNP is what we're calling Resource Risk Insight, or RRI. And what RRI does is it helps to prioritize those highest risk resources based on that analysis. Um, and often what you'll see with many security solutions is that security alerts are generated uh, without context behind it. And oftentimes you'll see pages and pages of alerts. And so that makes it very challenging for security teams to take action on the alerts. And so what Fortis CNP does is it correlates and normalizes those alerts, and then it adds context or insights to those risks so that it's a little more clear for the security team to know how to action it. And then there's also uh, integrations with digital workflow solutions, as well as consistent workflows that are provided to help security teams address and manage those risks. That makes it easier for them to proactively look at their cloud resources and address the highest risks uh, that mean the most to their organization. And so again, the, the goal here is really to make it easier for security teams uh, to know what to do with the risks that are presented to them. So let's see how Fortis CNP manages those risks. So as I mentioned earlier, the technology behind this is called Resource Risk Insights or RRI. And what that does is it uh, basically correlates and contextualizes the security alerts and findings um, you know, from the different services across the different cloud providers, as well as if they're existing Fortinet customers, uh, you know, the ratings associated with those, and then across those cloud environments to produce an aggregated risk score. And the calculation takes into account uh, different attributes that can include uh, the configurations of the different workloads, um, the number of vulnerabilities or threats that are occurring within those, those resources or workloads, um, you know, any data that might contain malware or sensitive information, as well as who has access to what to be able to look at behavioral anomalies associated with that, that could potentially indicate, you know, data leakage or anything along those lines. Um, it also looks at other security factors like custom policies that an organization might have put in place. And so it will then basically analyze um, all of those attributes and then calculate a risk score where it prioritizes based on the risk score, the higher uh, risks associated with those cloud resources. And, and then of course there's, there's the insights or workflows to be able to address it. And so later in this demo, you'll be able to see kind of that overall risk view of the cloud environment. You'll be able to also see the risk posture over time. And then you'll also be able to see this prioritized view that RRI provides and then how to take action on those risks. So before we get to that point, um, I do want to back up a little bit and talk about a little bit about why we developed this. Uh, you know, over the past couple of years, you know, businesses have really accelerated their digital transformation um, initiatives uh, and adapted to the various changes, whether they're operational or market demands or, you know, just what was going on in the environment. And during this time, security may not have necessarily been top of mind for them. And with this accelerated move to the cloud, it has really brought on new risks that 
uh, customers are experiencing and they're looking for ways to kind of resolve that. Um, to start, you know, traditional security tools lack some of those capabilities to be able to respond quickly to the dynamic changes of the cloud and address the cloud risks. You know, many of the security controls historically applied to on-prem uh, don't necessarily migrate as effectively or even map to the cloud. And so with organizations leveraging multi-cloud strategies on top of that, the security controls could be different across the cloud environments as well. And so as these new um, you know, risks started to emerge, organizations would add new solutions, usually from different vendors, uh, each time these new risks popped up to ensure that they had sufficient security coverage for their cloud workloads. And so over time, because there's so many different solutions that are out there with more and more solutions added, this has really led to security tool sprawl. And a lot of these tools are generally operating in silos and it's created this fragmented security architecture for organizations to manage. Um, and there was actually a recent study that noted that today's enterprises manage more than 50 separate security tools. And it may take even 30 of those additional separate tools to be able to manage or mitigate those risks. And then with each of these tools generating its own set of a security alerts or findings, you can imagine that security teams are just overwhelmed with all of the alerts that they have to come through, uh, trying to figure out what the top priorities are, um, you know, and that's really created this, um, this culture of like alert fatigue. Um, and because they're not equipped to prioritize and investigate all the alerts, uh, mitigating and remediating becomes very challenging. And that's led to decreased productivity and inconsistent workflows. And now security risks are accumulating much faster than they can be addressed, which puts a lot of organizations at risk. So with all of this in mind, organizations are really looking for how to evolve their solutions and how to address these challenges so that instead of operating in kind of a reactive mode, that they're able to actually look at it and operate more in a proactive manner to manage their cloud risks. But what's the right approach? Um, you know, there's a ton of different cloud native uh, solutions available, and many of the times they don't integrate uh, together. And so having to manage each of these tools separately, uh, trying to understand what the alerts mean from each of these tools and trying to rationalize those security findings across the different tools, you know, is again, very overwhelming. And that doesn't even include if they're leveraging their you know, cloud investments or their uh, CSP security services. Each cloud has their own cloud native uh, security services and they don't necessarily you know, are consistent in terms of applying the same kind of policy or protection across the different clouds. They're all kind of different in its own ways. And so many times organizations think more tools are better, but the reality is too many disparate tools doesn't necessarily improve security posture, it actually just complicates it and creates more security gaps and visibility issues. So how do you simplify cloud native security? Well, first off, you wanna leverage what you have, the cloud investments. You know, um, to start uh, the cloud service providers, security services are very easy to deploy and you can operationalize that very quickly. Um, you know, and when you think about, you know, cloud security, it's more important to have security in place than to have the most complex solution that you know, requires custom policies and cloud architects to be able to implement, but it does take a while to be able to deploy it or make changes to it. And so with that delay, your organizations are left without a security solution and that actually exposes their organizations um, to greater risks. And so when we look at what is needed to be able to simplify this and make this very easy uh, to, um, you know, to deploy. We've, we've talked to a number of various customers and we tried to understand you know, what their challenges were, what they wanted to see in an overall solution. We've also talked to um, you know, various analysts uh, to get their perspective on what the easiest and, and most simplest way to implement security um, and to be able to uh, to have that protection in place to adapt to the change of the cloud. And what they were um, coming back with is that, you know, first off, we need to think of it as more of a platform, not just point products where you just plug in the gaps as these risks or, or threats emerge. It's 
How do you think about it from more of a broader perspective? Um, how do you build more of a broader visibility across your cloud ecosystem? And as things change, you're able to adapt quickly. Um, the second part is how, how can you have a, is it having a solution actually that has integrations already built in? You know, we're constantly hearing from our customers that uh, integrating or trying to cobble the various solutions together is challenging. Um, and that that is a common issue in terms of trying to uh, get all of these solutions to work together. So having a solution where the integrations are already built in uh, helps to reduce that friction and helps to reduce that complexity because the solution is already taking care of that for you. Um, next is having a solution that uh, is able to provide that context. So as I mentioned earlier, you know, a lot of the security findings that are generated by various solutions don't necessarily have context behind it. And so the ability to identify what needs to happen takes time. And so if a solution is able to not only provide context behind the risk um, and the insights to why that risk is a higher priority versus others, uh, that really helps security teams accelerate that response to minimize or mitigate the risk. And then lastly, knowing what to do with it. That's the key thing, right? So how do they take action on it? How do they take all of those alerts and rationalize it and, and do something so that they're able to protect their environment? Um, and so if there is a solution that creates these workflows that can be consistently applied across various cloud environments, that really helps security teams without uh, by helping them to be able to implement, you know, the proper security protocols in place without having to learn about the intricacies of each of the cloud environments and trying to figure out how to apply that same set of policies or protection across the different cloud environments. So that reduces the time to remediate, uh, knowing that security is consistently applied. So based on these requirements, this is how Fortis DNP was developed. Fortis DNP is our cloud native application protection platform. And what we've done is we've built um, integrations with the cloud service provider security services, as well as with Fortinet Security Fabric and FortiGuard Threat Intelligence to help organizations be able to prioritize and manage uh, these risks with those context actionable insights. And so with this approach, what we're doing is we're complementing CSP's uh, security services, uh, and we're not competing with them. We're basically taking uh, what they're very good at within their own cloud environments, and we're taking that data and analyzing that along with another uh, a set, uh, various sets of other attributes to be able to prioritize where those risks are. Um, and so we want customers to be able to leverage those services. We want them to be able to maximize the value of the cloud investments that they're already likely invested in. Uh, and this helps to create more of a broader uh, visibility or broader uh, view across their cloud resources, um, knowing that these services are deeply integrated into those cloud environments and we're able to see in real time, you know, the, the various security events that are happening within their, their ecosystems. And so again, the challenge really is around, you know, with these services generating a large amount of data, how do we help them rationalize that data? And that's what Fortis DNP aims to do, is to be able to rationalize all those alerts uh, and make it easier for security teams to understand where the most critical risks are and then what to do to remediate it. And then this is just an example of some of the integrations that we started with. And so we will continue to integrate additional uh, CSP security services um, as part of roadmap. And that will help further provide broader visibility across you know, their cloud environments and, and broader coverage. And so we're gonna to continue to build on uh, you know, those capabilities uh, to provide greater context and insights for the resources for uh, customers to manage their environment. And then these are some of the common use cases that Fortis DNP helps to address. Uh, you know, from a risk management perspective, it's really about getting that visibility into the high risk resources, um, you know, and through RRI that helps provide that view as well as the actionable uh, insights to manage the risk. Um, it also helps to manage um, threats by continuously monitoring and analyzing those security findings um, to not only evaluate best practices in terms of, you know, configurations and prevent misconfigurations, 
uh, but also look for potential threats as they tend to emerge. Um, it also protects data by continuously scanning uh, for malware, uh, sensitive data, as well as any behavioral anomalies that could potentially, um, you know, look like it could be data leakage. Uh, for and organizations, if, yes? If someone has a compliance standard that they have to meet that's not out of the box, can that be some, can they do, create a custom compliance standard? Yes, yes. So there's definitely, um, you know, the predefined policies that help with, uh, you know, some of the, the the current standards and mandates. But in addition to that, they can also uh, develop custom policies associated with that. And then uh, the capabilities to simplify compliance is there in terms of um, reporting and being able to um, look at non-compliance areas and track and audit those capabilities or those, uh, you know, those areas over time. Um, and then lastly, it also provides visibility into the security posture for container registries and images. Uh, and it has integrations with Kubernetes environments um, to be able to monitor traffic across the, the container, um, the containers as well. And so this is just a quick case study um, from BK Bank. Uh, you know, and I just want to highlight where Forta CNP was really able to help, you know, one of our customers. Um, you know, they, some of the challenges were that they had just a mix of different security tools. Uh, Fortis CNP was able to simplify their overall security architecture. Uh, it helped them to provide that broad visibility across their cloud ecosystem, um, you know, and allowed them to utilize the cloud investments that they already had in place with, uh, you know, because they were using AWS. And so with the ability to um, manage from a single dashboard, all of it was integrated, uh, and then being a financial organization, compliance was also top of mind. And so being able to address the compliance capabilities, um, you know, help them meet their overall business needs. And so why should the customer use for CNP? Uh, you know, the goal again was really to simplify cloud security. You know, customers really benefit because these integrations are already built in. Uh, they don't have to worry about having to piece part all of these um, various services and solutions together. You know, we're, we're doing that for them. So we're trying to create this friction free cloud security solution for them to just be able to operationalize and deploy very quickly. Um, you can scale security with ease. So again, you can operationalize whether it's the cloud service provider security services or solutions from Fortinet um, Fabric, they could be able to deploy that very easily. And for, um, you know, if they're, if they're planning on expanding their overall security footprint, um, knowing that some of these services are already integrated for the CNP helps them give them more options to be able to look at other, you know, solutions that uh, are integrated in for a CNP. And so that also helps them innovate you know, and deliver applications faster. Um, again, it helps to increase productivity. You know, we wanted to help the security team really be able to take more of a proactive view into managing cloud risk. And so now with Force DNP, they have this prioritized view. They know exactly where to focus the, uh, you know, their efforts in terms of the high risk resources that they need to address first. Um, and then they have actions in terms of what to do with those, you know, particular risks. Uh, that the, have the highest impacts to their organization. Um, and then with these consistent workflows, it also helps security teams be able to, uh, you know, proactively um, and consistently address, you know, security gaps across their cloud environments. Um, and that helps to increase their overall productivity because they can push that out faster. And then it helps maximize the value of these security investments. So if the customers are already using these cloud services, we're leveraging them. Um, and so we're leveraging that as well as uh, if they're current Fortinet cloud security customers, we're leveraging the intelligence associated with that. And with these workflows that um, are in place, um, you can also put stop gap remediations in place so that uh, it can help prevent threats and be able to push, um, you know, security protocols or, or controls into the uh, complementary Fortinet cloud security solutions to protect against threats. And so again, all of this is, you know, built off of the RRI technology that helps to really provide that broad visibility and context to manage risk. And so all of this helps to also increase overall security ROI from the customer's perspective.
And so now what I want to do is show you exactly what Fortis DMP does and show it in action. So I'll turn it over to Louie. So just wanted to start off with a couple slides here just to help kind of frame how we're getting that information from the customer environment, right? So let me put this into presenter mode or start from here. So um, so this is a SaaS offering, right? So there's the, the frictionless install means that we're not having you install agents on your uh, EC2 instances. You're not deploying a bunch of Lambda functions for us to go and pull and pull of whatever. We have that on the left side of the slide. That's our uh, SaaS stack. But on the right side is really the customer account. And this is where we're integrating with Inspector and Guard Duty, where we're having that funneled through the security hub for for two main reasons. Uh, one, obviously, is aggregation, especially when you get to multi-account, multi-region. But the second is really the data nominal, nominalization, if I could get, get that out right. But basically, data conversion uh, by putting all of those different findings into a common format. So AWS actually has the AWS security finding format. So that makes it easier for us to ingest uh, new findings as they continue to iterate and provide new use cases through their services. So then that goes to EventBridge. EventBridge is just a you know a push system basically. So it's a rule that's going to forward all the, those findings over to us. So we receive that as a stream and we start chomping at the bit once it hits the queue. Uh, but when we start talking other things, we need to look at CloudTrail logs. Uh, need to see user activity, uh, new deployments or modifications to existing resources. VPC flow logs are very relevant. And then, of course, we actually pull S3 uh, files out of S3 when we see cloud trail, uh, uh, cloud trail showing a user modified, accessed, or downloaded a file. Um, and then we do further functions like DLP and malware scanning. Uh, so this is a, a quick picture of a multi-region or multi-account setup. Security Hub is really easy for turning that on, so it's not complicated. That's why we like using these native services uh, to just make that an easy button for the customer. Um, we have very easy uh, CloudFormation templates as well that can help them set up uh, what they have to do on the right side of the screen, which is their accounts. Um, so let's go ahead and look at Fortis CNP from a SOC engineer's perspective, right? Uh, the whole point, you know, is in the security operations center, you don't want to slow the business down, um, but you want to have them be able to get more deployments and things going on, but you want your risk to be less. So on the dashboard here, you see in the risk trend uh, chart here that the green line is basically your number of free sources. The blue line is the aggregate risk. This is for all monitored accounts. So this can help you see how you're doing over time as you start uh, working with your people, processes, and technology to have a more secure environment. Um, on the right, it's just a simple way to group uh, your accounts together. We call it a resource group. And then all you can, uh, what you really do with that is make it easier to then come through here and filter on various uh, dashboards or other pages within uh, the portal. Um, so here we're giving you a quick view of the different uh, resource types. Um, if you click on that, that would just show you those resources and relevant scores for that. Um, but we're not just giving you the page of alerts and saying, hey, you got a few hundred pages of uh, alerts that you have to filter through. We, we take it a little bit further and say, okay, there's some risky states that a workload can be in that we know of, right? Uh, botnet here is confirmed based off VPC flow logs that are accepted VPC flow logs. We can confirm that you have, in fact, talked to a botnet CNC because we have all the IP reputation from FortiGuard and all these other things, right? So we have a lot of uh, threat intelligence that we can simply apply to some of the native tools. And then we also have malware. So what this means is instead of us having to install FortiClient or EDR or something like that, this is actually uh, guard duty malware uh, uh, protection. So what this does, it's doing the EBS snapshot scanning uh, of instances, whether they're running or not, and it can say, hey, there's viruses or not. They can let us know. That helps us correlate that information to give you a better idea of the risk you have. So if we drill into uh, one of these, um, you can immediately see that we can go to a findings page and have tons and tons of you know pages of findings, but who wants to go through that, right? So the resources here, the whole goal of this um, is to give you a quick insight. Let me go back to the dashboard. I clicked off this. Uh, but basically, the whole point of this is to say, okay, it's it's a set of resources, but what's more important is even though these all have the same state of having some botnet confirmed communication, their risk scores are different because that means we're looking at multiple things for telemetry, right? To really get a better picture of how bad this is. So the score obviously is um, out of 100 here, right? Um, so this is the base CAN score that we have. And so that's from us looking at, for example, 
Uh, we score each of these different things uh, differently. So we have a configuration risk, which this uh, instance doesn't have any, but we do have vulnerabilities and a whole lot of them. So instead of just shooting it up to 100 because there's a whole lot of vulnerabilities, um, we take that into perspective alongside with threats. So the vulnerabilities, those are coming from inspector, these threats, uh, this particular threat is actually one of our local policies that are triggered. But you can also see if you're used to using guard duty, these are guard duty alerts that are triggering. So we're basically taking these inputs from various locations and being able to tell you, um, hey, yeah, this is what we think the risk score should be out of 100. But obviously, this could be a test box you don't care about. This could be production. This could be you know, very sensitive data. So how can you make that number more important to you? And the way we do that is by giving you the ability to modify the risk calculation uh, just through the use of metadata, right? Tags, everybody uses tags, right? Up to 50 per instance and other resources, right? So basically what this is saying is you can choose based off the priority of the data or resource to you or the environment it's in. You can say, let me create one of these and tell Fortis CMP to look for a particular named tag. And then based off the values, I can keep the risk score at 100% of the base score or I can bump it up 100%. Right, I can uh, bump it up just a little bit, or I can even mute it down if I wanted to. So that way, you're not really spending your time on vulnerable hosts in a test environment nobody cares about. You're spending it on the more important environments. So that's how we can make that risk score more relevant to you. Is it only tags, or can I do it like based on like the account that it might be in? Today, um, or other attributes? Yeah, great question. So right now, the risk score modifier is only metadata tags. So it's not looking at other things that you could do, like the account ID or region ID. But that's definitely things we've kept in mind for future, you know. We're trying to keep it simple for the first, uh, you know, revision of that feature. Yeah, great question. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and look at the, um, uh, the botnet activity here. So it takes a little bit of time. Uh, so coming back here, um, if we click on, uh, sorry, going to the wrong place. So where did that go? There we go, associated resources. So talking about that, um, you know, we'll get into it more at the end of it, but we have a way of tracking related things. So if there's an EBS volume that gets some malware, we know what instance it's tied to. We know what security groups are tied to it. And we also know what VPC flow logs are tied to that given ENI. So this takes a little bit to load. So I kind of already have it loaded, um, loaded over here. But basically with this instance, we're able to say, okay, let's take a quick peek at the security group and let's visualize those VPC flow logs, right? So we're seeing the inbound is open pretty much on a couple well-known ports. Uh, to the world and also outbound is wide open, which is a very, very bad thing, right? So if we say, okay, let's look at the botnet communication here. Um, this is gonna load up some IPs. And if we wanted to look at the destination port, it's port 80. So security groups really aren't gonna change the outcome of that. Um, maybe we can do some geo filtering, but all of these IPs are in the US. So really that's not gonna help us much, right? Uh, so something layer seven would really help us to do IP reputation. Obviously, FortiGates can do that. Um, so that could help you with that problem. Um, we also have um, the ability, so botnet are confirmed botnet CNC hits in our databases, but suspicious IPs or any IPs that have been involved with spamming, malicious uh, websites that have recently been taken over, things like that, right? So you really don't want uh, those talking to you, right? And so we see that port 22 is open on the host. This is all inbound traffic, and obviously geo-blocking could help here, uh, but also you'd want some other controls as well, as well as modifying the security group to be more restrictive than that. And then of course, um, you know, people, it's hard to visualize your VPC flow logs to just really realize how bad opening everything outbound is. Those are all the destination ports that this instance is communicated to. So a lot more than 80 and 443, lots of sketchy looking stuff, shouldn't really be there. Um, so anyways, that's a quick highlight of that feature. So let's go back to the dashboard here. And does it only look at security groups? Will it look at other things in the service chain like WAF or, or other security controls? So right now it's security groups and NACLs because it's looking at the cloud native stuff like AWS WAF, that, that could be a thing at some point, but uh, today it's just like the basic VPC structures, right? Um, you know, we're definitely looking at things that could be done down in the future, like there's the AWS network analyzer, that's really cool. Um, so that could definitely help us uh, plan out or map out something a little bit better. Um, with using that cloud native service, right? Great question. 
Um, so another thing that we have here um, is uh, these last two widgets on the dashboard. And they're really just to give you a quick highlight of where you stand from a thousand foot perspective with permissions, plus the content of the files within your storage bucket. So that's kind of can be a little bit tedious. So what we do with this is we'll actually, when those CloudTrail logs come in, we'll see who's touched these files. We'll go ahead and start a scan job for those. So we'll import them into our environment, detonate it, scrub it in 24 hours from our uh, data stores. So if we take a look, right, um, this is kind of mixing. So this is CSPM, CNAP, all kinds of stuff. And so it's kind of a, a little bit different of a product than what you would see on the market typically. So yes, we have configuration risk here. Everybody's seen, of course, don't have a public accessible bucket, um, but we're also marrying together the guard duty stuff that's saying, hey, there was anonymous access to this S3 bucket. And then we have local stuff saying suspicious countries that shouldn't be you know, hitting this box or this, um, this bucket obviously is. So um, that's a, uh, something to uh, you know consider. And also uh, out of the files scanned or the files within the bucket that have been scanned, obviously lots of malware here. But the question isn't, okay, there's malware. The question is, how did it get there, right? Who put it there? When was it last modified? Those kinds of things. What kind of virus is it, even if you wanted to know? So we can give you that without anything in line. So you get those kind of uh, timestamps uh, over there you get the category of the malware and the actual strain of that particular variant. And then here, if you click on the user, you can get a little bit more information. So you can see, hey, we got an office in Santa Clara. He's logging in from there at 10.03 a.m. That's perfectly fine, but what he's uploading is not. So that means likely you need to quarantine that laptop, talk to that user, figure out what's going on, more than likely a compromised uh, endpoint, right? Can you clarify the point where you mentioned that you import the file into mm -hmm. your environment? Is it just the infected, the malicious ware or infected files? And what environment is it being imported into the instance that's within your cloud or? Right, so our architecture, it's a, it's a microservices based setup. So we have this in multiple regions. Uh, so we're gonna actually pull, so when we see a cloud trail uh, log that says, hey, that user uploaded the file at 10 o'clock this morning, then we're gonna say, okay, let's grab that file from that bucket if it's a monitored bucket. And then we're gonna go and pull that file. We're gonna detonate it in our environment to run our local AV and DLP scanning. And then we scrub it after 24 hours. Uh, so we have uh, obviously deployments in multiple regions. We have uh, some in the EU, we have some in Germany, things like that for uh, data uh, needing to stay within the same country, right? So, um, so that's how we approach it today. Uh, there have been conversations with um, with like moving DLP, for example, to Macy and then just using that within the customer's environment instead of uh, doing that on our end and having a bit more flexibility there. Uh, so there's definitely room for things to change down the road, but for today, that's uh, how that works. So the data is leaving the customer's environment into your environment. Correct. And then after 24 hours, our data retention policy, it's on public documentation. So um, certain data we keep longer, but files are within 24 hours. So that's gone from our system. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Yeah, and that's definitely a feature. You can be selective about how you enable it. So you can enable per bucket, use regex matching to say which files you want to grab, things like that. So you're not having us just grab everything in your environment. Uh, probably wouldn't want that, right? So. All right, so going back to the dashboard here, um, and just an example, right? So the whole point of using the cloud native services is we can focus on doing more correlation and not so much building our own policies because that just becomes a, a numbers game, right? So a quick example of showing that here is this, this uh, resource, uh, this instance has malware uh, as a highlighted state, which basically means that from uh, guard duty, we received this finding which just is relatively new. This came out in Reinforce. Um, this past was a July, uh, but, but basically, uh, you know, with guard duty, they're able to do that EBS scanning of the volumes and notify us if there's something going on with any of the volumes. And we can consider that as part of our risk score calculation. So as we end up adding more and more items to the risk score factor, um, and then allow you more ability to tweak that, this becomes a better way to view your resources versus uh, pages and pages of findings. And then uh, one last thing I wanted to show here is um, for things coming down the road um, that are pretty interesting. So uh, like you've been hearing in the other presentations, the fabric integration is very important for us. Uh, obviously this product is part of that. Uh, so what we've, the first part of this is we've had a Fortigate 
logs, IPS logs for VMs that are in those protected cloud accounts, they can then also stream that information to Fortis CNP uh, for it to uh, then be able to add that to an instance, knowing if an IPS alert was actually blocked or just detected, and knowing that that uh, occurred is important because now when we move on to the second big thing that we're adding in is open policy agents. So if anybody's looked into that and the Rego language, that's a really cool way uh, to not just do authorization, but really it's just saying, hey, what's out there? Anything matches this complex match rule that would be a lot harder to do. Uh, traditionally, here you go, you can create your own rules in a simple way. And so with that, that's going to allow us to create more rules, and that's going to also make it easier for customers to create rules, because uh, as it stands today, you're basically creating a custom Lambda function. It's up to you to have somebody write Python code for you to implement that and manage that and support that, and that's that's too much. So the open policy agent um, and that policy engine is, is a huge change for us, so that's coming next week. Um, and then with the uh, AWS Neptune and the graph databases there, we're going to start making more connections between not just the instances, but IAM roles attached to it, what permissions are there, and try to really go further down the block to figure out what kind of access could be had to really have a better uh, risk score evaluation. It's, the, it integrates with the different cloud providers. Is that only in the commercial side, or does it also integrate with the government side, like GCC High and all? Yeah, so today with CNP, that's uh, not in Gov space, so no Gov Cloud today. Um, that's definitely obviously in the roadmap. Um, and, and having more regions added for our folks in Canada, um, they definitely need that for their, their government. So uh, yeah, that's on the books. Does it support hybrid as well? Uh, so with the container perspective, yes, uh, because the other side is really geared towards homing in on your public cloud, but Kubernetes is, is hybrid, right? Um, so you can have, so that's something we didn't dive to and to, uh, to the demo, we're primarily focusing on the RRI piece, but uh, Container Guardian can basically do three main things. Um, there's a daemon set that's essentially deployed on your monitor clusters that's going to provide a CSPM functionality for your Kubernetes stack, right, privately. So you're not exposing your API to the world to have us scan it from a public IP. It's also looking at your CNI plugin, it's chaining to that so that we can look at all the traffic communication from, you know, de you know this deployment to another deployment uh, between uh, different pods within, you know, containers within the same pod or from pod to pod. All of that's going to be visualized really nicely for you. Um, and then the last thing that we do is we have a CICD plugin. So as uh, part of your Jenkins build policy, obviously everybody sort of that kind of stuff, we can scan it uh, with agents locally in your cluster. Uh, we'll download our scanners. They'll uh, look at that, and then it'll basically be able to pass or fail based on number of vulnerabilities found. Um, you can tweak that policy, obviously. Um, and then, of course, regular scanning your images and repos, whether they're public or, or private. Um, so that that definitely can be self-managed or uh, EKS, AKS, all that stuff. The yeah. malware scanning mm -hmm. that you talked about, is it just doing um, uh, file hash? Yeah, it's our so it's CPRL is our official language for the way our signatures are, but it's our known signatures only. So you heard about Forte Sandbox, and that's like our our zero day behavior based analysis. That's not there as part of CMP today. That's definitely been discussed and would be awesome. Um, so yeah, I would love to see that. But right now, it's just our known uh, signature list, which actually is pretty extensive because we can run our extreme database because it's not in line. It's not causing any latency or any impacts like that. Can I go back to my question previously about the data leaving the customer's environment? I have a little bit of a concern there, obviously, with any type of laws. The data is leaving it, and the concern is where it's going and what data that you're taking. Is there any thoughts behind having an isolated environment of isolate within the customer's account and destroy there and then kind of terminate everything? Or like, what are the thoughts behind that? Um, so that's definitely the route we're going with DLP. Obviously, we, we want to keep that in their environment. Um, AV, that's a tricky one. Um, you know, that would take a little bit more development effort. It's definitely something that's doable. I mean, we we have everything virtualized. So if you go to the marketplace, we have a bunch of VMs and, and SaaS offerings over there, right? So technically, we could do it. Um, is it on the roadmap that I'm aware of? Not really, All right? So, um, so that's as far as I can take it today. Yeah. So we can deploy that within our own environments for customers who don't want a SaaS type? 
Yeah, so if you want to do like known malware and also zero day threat protection, you can deploy Sandbox as a VM within whatever cloud you want, public or private. And that can be, you know, pointed at your storage blobs or S3 buckets or NFS mounts or whatever, right? And so that can look at holistically all of that. Plus, it integrates with your FortiGates. Third party, you can use standard uh, protocols like ICAP, or you can API push something over to us. And it's not just files, it's also URLs and things like that. So however far down the rabbit hole you want to go, we have different products for that. Um, so yeah, Fortis Sandbox would be a better fit. Yeah, I was just going to say, I know in, in our environment, especially with high trust and PHI, like that yeah. becomes really problematic for, sure. for us. Yeah, absolutely.